Hallelujah. Amen. I don't know if we took time to welcome somebody in the house of the Lord this morning. This afternoon yet, a few minutes to the afternoon. Welcome them in the house of the Lord. You're welcome in the house of the Lord. You guys are whispering to each other. It's like, it's okay, you can talk to each other. Amen. Amina. Amen. 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 Amina. Glory be to the Lord. Um, before you sit, let's do one thing. Oh, we know Ambrose Gracious. Oh, we know Ambrose Precious. Please bring your parents here. Pedro Benjamin Miracle Muyomba. Pedro Benjamin Miracle Muyomba, bring your parents here. And Okoth Elijah. Okoth Elijah. Please bring your parents with you here. Abana abo balete bazadde babwe wano. Bana bana bagenze mu Sunday school. Who is this one? This is gracious. This is Pedro. Hmm? Pedro Miracle. Okay. Where is Elijah? Elijah. Elijah. Hey, Elijah, they are sabi orwale. I don't know, maybe there was a miscommunication, but we were told that Elijah would be here. All right. Um, yes, I was about to ask the mamas in the house to handle the babies. Nchala, Kenya told Dayo. All right, let's raise our hands and bless these children. Father, we thank you for these children. The gifts that you have given to us. King of kings, we bless your name. We magnify your name for all these wonderful babies. Thank you for the gifts to these families. And this afternoon, they bring these children before you. We dedicate these children into your hands. May they be mighty warriors in your hands. May they bring joy to the families from which they issue. May they be the beginning of a great generation in their homes and their households. In the name of Jesus, we bless them. For it's written that no one can cast the truth that which Yahweh has blessed. These ones are not cast. For in the name of Jesus tonight, we take authority against every reproach and every generational issue that sits and claims their lives. To break them off of their lives. By the blood of Jesus. And we plant the seed of the Holy Ghost. The seed of the word of God. We bless them and their parents. And the households from which they issue. And we pronounce provision. Perfect health, success, and excellence upon them all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, this is Okoth. Okoth. Uh, Okoth, you call. Is it Okoth in TND or TND? Where park. Pedro. Pedro. Miracle. And uh, Owino and Ambrose 
Hallelujah. You may take your seat in the presence of the Lord. God is good. I said God is good. Amen. 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 But you have a mix and to have a sasu de sentes away to Zimbabwe. Check your two says, Manchel. Check your two say. It'll be come a saja, Yasigala Kuban. Data Yakuza Sasula, but then several moons to read a phone. Amina, I want to pass over who did a big gamble via the phone. A band, Yalisa Sula. Maybe we change a microphone. I don't know. Is it the mic that's the problem? Amen. Oh, great. Finally. Praise the name of the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord for this afternoon. Today we began looking at the theme filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, it is easy for you to think that feeling of the Holy Ghost or the infilling is a one-time event. It is not. Scripture clearly shows us it is a process of life. Continually, when you read in the book of Acts, whenever those apostles came together, they asked for an infilling. I gave an example in the morning. You cannot feel that which is already full. You only feel that which has gone or drained out or gotten less. Which means that when we get a measure of the Holy Ghost, there is a utilization of that power in us. It is utilized in our lives to an extent that if, if you just keep draining out, you get to a place of emptiness. So consistently you need to be in a place where you can plug in so that what is used up is filled in. Luke chapter 24 verse 49. The Bible says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry. Tarry, wait. Tarry. In the city of Jerusalem. Until you have been endured with power on high. The best example of what this means is that most of us do carry phones with us in, in this day and age. It doesn't matter however much I filled this phone on Friday. I had to refill it last night. And had I not done that, it would not be of any use to me right now. Now it's interesting how the Lord in the verse that we have read in Luke 24 he had just been speaking with these guys and spent three years with them in fact at one point in time the scripture records that he breathed upon them and he told them receive the Holy Ghost. He had taught them the necessities of what they needed in ministry. And the Bible says he had given them what today we call the Great Commission. 
But after all of that, the Bible is careful to give us an instruction that he gives them here. This is just before Christ is caught up into the heavenlies. He tells them that it doesn't matter everything else I have told you. Wait. Wait until you have been endued with power. Wait until you have been charged up. Wait until you have received an issue that is different from everything else that your brain understands. Guess who has endued them? God they are waiting upon will endure them. What that tells me is that it doesn't matter the calling on your life. The purpose seated upon your life. The prophetic words that have been upon your life. But until you have been endued with power, until you have encountered the Holy Ghost, to a point of being full, then you should wait. You shouldn't step out into doing what you have been called to do. The calling is one thing. The infilling is another thing. The calling is important because you shouldn't step into any office unless you're called into it. But where it concerns the manifestation of the works of God, we have no business engaging in the calling unless we are filled with power. Because it's going to take the power of God to execute the callings of God on your life. It's, it's interesting that when you read in the book of Nehemiah and also in the book of Isaiah, there is this guy called Zerubbabel. There are three guys who lived in the same generation. Nehemiah, the one who got inspired by the Holy Ghost in a time of fasting and waiting on the Lord. You find Ezra who was the person called in the office of the priest in that time. But then you also find a guy called Zerubbabel who is a child from the tribe of Judah who had the calling of leading the children of Israel and Judah. So when Nehemiah comes and commands the rebuilding of the wall, it wasn't a work for one man. He carried out an apostolic work, started the work, supervised it, made sure there was provisioning for it. But at some point, there were people who were called into certain offices that needed to stand in those offices. And one of them was Zerubbabel. He was the leader of the children of Israel and Judah at the time. So when Tobiah and Sanballat wrote their famous letter, the letter was delivered to Zerubbabel. And the Bible says this guy reads this letter and he does something that many of us forget to do. Because the letter was portending destruction again. It was telling the children of Israel that whatever you're doing, it shall not prosper. Look at it even the way it looks. It has a sign of weakness all over it. Even if a little fox run on it, that wall will collapse. The reality is, in the eyes of man, Sanballat and Tobias 
Tobias had not told the lie. They bring this letter to Zerubbabel. What does the Bible say? He took that letter into the temple. And the Bible says he lifted up that letter before the Lord. And he said, Lord, look. We are operating in the prophetic. We are not just doing these things by ourselves. But see what our enemies are doing. The Bible says, after a while, the Lord speaks and he comes through the priest. And he comes, go tell my servant Zerubbabel that it is not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Speak ye to the mountain, O Zerubbabel, and cry unto it, Grace, Grace. You know, many times we do not understand that the calling and the ministries on our lives are not going to be by our own power. You, you may be positioned in a place and the Lord has called you into an office. Please do understand I'm not only talking about the priestly officers. The pastors, the evangelists, the teachers and all those kinds of people. Some of us are called like Dorcas into the ministry of money. There are those of us who are called into politics. There are those of you who are called into helping to settle your communities. Because when God is working, he does not limit his work to the pulpit. He does not limit his work to the four walls of the church. In fact, the work of the Holy Spirit throughout scripture, there is more mention of the work of the Holy Spirit outside of the four walls of the sanctuary than inside the sanctuary. So we need to understand that it is not by power. It is not just by your academic knowledge. They matter, but it's not about that. It is not about who you know. It matters, but it's not about that. It is not about your contacts. It matters, but it's not just about that. It is not about your experience. That matters, but it's not about that. It is not going to be by power or by might. But if the Lord has spoken and you align yourself in a place where you're plugged in, it is going to take the Holy Spirit to fulfill that calling that is upon your life. That is why Jesus, the last instruction he gives the church before his quarter is that tarry until you are filled. I remember in 2017, <laughs> when I took on a new assignment, I had great experience in my technical field. I had great experience, leadership experience even in the corporate world. But I remember stepping into that new role and telling the Lord, on a daily basis. Holy Spirit, I need your counsel. I need your guidance. I need you to lead me. And I can tell you that in a period of two and a half years, I was able to surmount issues and scale walls that had defeated people for a period of time. Even to date, when I look back at how I did it, I know it had nothing to do with the multitudes of experience that I had. You know, the moment, the, the, the area of time that we have entered into as the church and as the world is going to take people who have understood the role and the place of the Holy Spirit. It is not by power. It is not by might. But by the Spirit of the Lord. 
And one of the activation keys is in that very verse where he says that you, Zerubbabel, you shall look to the mountain and cry, Grace! Grace to the mountain. It takes the power of God to put things in line. Some of the things that God has appointed you to do are so much out of line. Some of you have called to your have been called to your families to put things straight. But, but the families are so much out of line that if you were to do that in your own wisdom as a human being, you will not handle that. That you cannot, whatever you're building even now looks like the shaky walls of Zerubbabel. Praise the Lord. Now in this season of prayer and fasting, allow me to make a few comments in the next couple of minutes. Joel chapter 2 verse 15 up to the end. Joel chapter 2 verse 15. What does scripture tell us? It says, blow the trumpet in Zion, consecrate a fast, and call a sacred assembly. Verse 16. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and nursing babies. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. Verse 17, let the priests who minister to the Lord, tell your neighbor, let the priests who minister to the Lord, whip between the porch and the altar. We are reciting the verse together. Let the priests who minister to the Lord whip between the porch and the altar and let them say, spare your people, O Lord. And do not give your heritage to reproach. We need to understand that we go through seasons of corporate fasting. But what happens in a season of corporate fasting? One of the things that happens in a season of corporate fasting, God has put structures in our midst for a reason. I cannot advise God on how and why he does things the way he does. But the verse that we read says, let the priests who minister to the Lord. Every house of worship does have priests who minister to the Lord. Even this house does have the priesthood. Every place where the heritage of the Lord sits does have a priesthood. Now, one of the things that should happen in a season of prayer and fasting is that when the priests have consecrated a time of prayer and fasting. One, one of our purposes or one of our places or areas of obedience is that we become part of it. And there is a reason why. Here in this portion of the verse, the Bible says that the prayer that the priests are praying between the porch and the altar it says, spare your people, O Lord. Do not give your heritage to reproach. I have heard people say, it is not possible for you to be born again and have a reproach on your life. But reproaches sit upon the children of God. 
reproaches are things that bring shame on our lives. They are the kind of things in our lives that don't give honor and glory to God. They could be events of a recurring nature. The easiest thing that most of you people understand a reproach to be, an example of a reproach is a curse. A repeated negative event. A, re a repeated negative episode. It is something that when somebody looks at your life, it is not a glorious thing but it brings shame in your life it's a place of defeat consistent defeat a reproach is generational if you look carefully at your life, you may find that it is a trend that has been in your family for long. I gave examples in the morning. Some people are, some people are thieves and kleptomaniacs. And yet they are born again. Why? There is a reproach. When you look at this prayer carefully, they are praying for the heritage of the Lord. We are the heritage of the Lord. These are people of the house, people of the temple, and yet they present with a reproach. One of the things that happens in a time of prayer and fasting in seasons like this, the grace of God places authority upon the priests to pray over you concerning reproaches. Because here it says, these priests pray, spare your people, O Lord, do not give your heritage to reproach. Is it possible for you to pray alone and the reproach is broken? Yes, it is possible. Because there is a guy in the Bible who the Bible says he had a reproach on his life in the book of Chronicles and he prayed that all oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory and cause me to flee from this evil that it will not pursue me. And the Bible says that God heard his prayer and he answered him. So I am not saying that reproaches will only go when the priests pray over you. But I am saying that in moments like this, in seasons like this, it is a season when the priests of the house have the grace of God upon them to pray you into deliverance to open chains over your life it is possible for the heritage of the Lord to have a reproach upon their lives it is possible when you read scripture it's there the children of God who had a reproach upon their lives. But then it says, these guys, they pray and say, spare your people, O Lord, do not give your heritage to reproach. That the nations should rule over them. Do you know the reason why many of us are being ruled by the nations? I am not talking about politics here. I am talking about the different areas where God has deployed you. It may be in your marriage that the nations have ruled over you. It may be in your business. Maybe you're running a school. And the nations have penetrated and infiltrated and they are ruling over you. In the book of Deuteronomy, 
We have a promise that we shall be the heads and not the tails. Now that verse continues to say that we shall be above only. There is a word only there. So when as a child of God, you're operating below capacity, there is a problem somewhere. There is a reproach somewhere. And the Bible says that the prayer of deliverance from reproach is that the nations do not rule over you. Then it continues to say, why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? <laughs> Do you know the reason why people today think that the born again church is a joke? It's a reproach. It's a reproach. It's a reproach. When born again marriages, instead of being an example, become the, the, the laughing stock of the world. When we become an obstacle to the move of the Holy Ghost, instead of becoming an open door for it, there is a reproach. When born again people begin using the worldly methods to make their businesses prosper, then there is a problem. Because you know what a reproach does? It makes you similar to the very same people you should be preaching to. And the people begin to ask a question. We are the same. Where is their God? Why do they fast that long? What are they doing when they are praying that long? Why don't they come and have fun with us in the club? Because there is no difference between you and them. Every time you find yourself in that place where people are asking that question, where is their God? This is not a an inquiring question. This is a taunting question. Every time that your neighbors ask a question, but where is their God? There's a reproach. But in a season like this, it is a time to deal with reproaches. Let's continue with verse 18. What does it say? Verse 18. Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and pity his people. Verse 19. And the Lord will answer and say to his people, let, let me ask you, why is the Lord answering? Ask your neighbor, why is the Lord answering? What events have happened there? There has been a call for a solemn fast. The priests are crying between the altar. And what is their prayer? Lord, remove the reproach from your heritage. So that the world cannot arrogantly ask, where is their God? When that has happened, the Bible says the Lord will answer and say to his people, behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil. Let me, let me tell you something. Reproach will cause shortage in your life. In your life. A reproach will cause you to make mistakes that are costly in your life. A reproach 
will cause you to wake up every morning and you work so hard. And you're behaving like somebody who is running on a treadmill. A lot of work. No visible progress forward. That's a reproach. But when the reproach is broken, the Bible says when God answers you, I will send you grain, new wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. Church, listen to me carefully. It is not enough for you to have enough. Did you hear me? It is not even scripture. For you to say, I have enough. I am getting by. When a reproach is broken, and God answers, he brings corn, wine, and oil. Not just what is enough. The Bible says, until you will be satisfied by them. If I ask a question this afternoon, how many satisfied people do we have in this house? We, we, we may be shocked. You don't talk for satisfaction. You do not talk for, you do not advertise for satisfaction. It talks for itself. A satisfied person has sights and sounds, sounds of signs and symptoms of omukoto. <laughs> sights and sounds. Sights and sounds of kambara. Satisfaction. Omukoto guleta ebirabika ko nebivuga. In as far as God's standard is concerned, it is not enough for you to have enough. You must be satisfied. In fact, when you go back to the Deuteronomy that I told you, it says you will eat until you're satisfied. What does it say here? It says, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. Lack of satisfaction is a sign of a reproach. You're married, but your marriage is, is not satisfying. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how many girls you try to find outside of your marriage. If you have a reproach, you will live a hungry life. It doesn't matter how many men give you money. If you have a reproach, your life will be like a, a, a black hole. You know what a black hole is? Reproach. Reproach. One of the signs that God has moved the reproach from your life is when there is satisfaction in your life. When you are rested in the provision of God. And I am not talking about you satisfying yourself, convincing yourself that you are now satisfied. He says, I will answer and say, Behold, I will send you grain and new wine and oil, and you will be satisfied by them. I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. Where does that begin? We began with the consecration of the solemn assembly. There was a place of priests crying between the altar. And they are telling the Lord, remove the reproach from your people. Verse 20. 
But I will remove far from you the northern army, and I will drive him away into a barren and desolate land, with his face toward the eastern sea and his back toward the western sea. His tench will come up, and his foul order will rise because he has done monstrous things. <laughs> E yareke bwa wo abakulembezebe abakulembeze 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 bemu abakulembezebe mu nyanja eyebu eyebu vanjuba ne naba naba sembi be naba sembi be mu nyanja eyobu gwanjuba ne chivundu che chiri chiri nya no kuunya do you know that when you have a reproach on your life, do you know that you can have a stench on your life? Sometimes it even manifests physically. There are people who have been prayed over and reproaches have gone and body odors have left them. But sometimes the stench is not a physical one. You have what we call a spirit of rejection. You're in a group of people, somebody comes and says, Hey, Chimwana, hey, Muria, hey, Kalieko, Mwana, hey. He bongas, bongas everyone, and for you they kind of jump you, and they bonga this one and this one, and you try to come, and they turn, and they go this side. You have a stench on your life. Nti mchivina chava antu, oria jana bonga kumantubo na gubogeza kumu gobelela na etola na etola na bonga kubalala chitegeza orike chivundu. You know, a young man is trying to look your way, but just in the process, somebody else who is just passing by, the young man sees them and they just go with this one. Omu vubuka ageza ako kweke ne nyakulava. Na ya vacha kutunu ya vati ni wabawa itao na mugula na mutuwala. You're invisible. Somehow when they are giving out free things, you skipped over and somehow there is no reason why they give this one, give this one. Then they somehow when they get to you, that is when things get finished. When they bring, now they skip you and they begin here and continue. I'm just trying to describe something that happens to people. Reproach causes rejection. Just like people will never hang around where a stench exists. But you know when the Lord redeems you from a reproach? He removes a stench from you. Ladies, forgive me. I have seen sometimes women. You see this woman is married to this man. And you even wonder how the man married that woman. But you can see the man husband. is very happy with this woman. Do you know what happened in that case? That person has the favor of God on them. That it is for you to whom nothing concerns that sees things that the other man doesn't see. But when you have a stench of a reproach on you, you might be the most beautiful girl on the village. And men will come and they will marry all the ugly girls in the village and for you remain there. But example Forgive me, ladies, I don't intend In to be words, mean. In other words, if you have the favor of God when God has rolled away the it reproach, it doesn't matter what you look like. You shall receive power. We 
When the Bible talks about the side of the north, what we call the north, every time you see the Bible mention that, it is the wrath of God, it is the anger of God, it is God using his strength to do something. You go study your Bible. Even when the Bible talks about left-handed men, now this thing that he says, I will remove from you the northern army. The reproach will cause God to exercise his left hand even in your life. How does that happen? I gave people an example that some of us, when you look at your family history, your great-great-grandfathers were involved in things that caused the left hand of God to rise against your family. And because the left hand of, of God is on your family, there is a tension on that family. You make a lot of money, but you never enjoy it. Have you, ne have you never seen people of the kind? <laughs> I, recently, my, my wife and I were somewhere, and this person we saw is clearly a wealthy person, but when you look at him, there is no wealth at all written on him. And it's not because he, he wants to be humble. There's a reproach on his life. You have a lot of wealth around you and resources. You can't even see them. It is those who come into your life that see them and they take them. For them, they go and they prosper with the little bit they have taken from you. When you have a reproach, you will teach people in school and they become the prime ministers while for you, you're still there. And they will keep saying, yeah, that yeah. man, if it wasn't that man, he helped me. Reproach. But you see, when God answers and he removes that northern army from you, that stench that the northern army had planted on you goes away. The purpose of times of prayer and fasting like this one is that the priests might pray over you that the stench on your life goes away. The stench chases customers. They want to buy, but they really cannot stand the stench. It chases away potential spouses. It chases away existing spouses. Let, let me tell you a weird thing about reproaches. Do you know that some reproaches are, are triggered because you carried out a certain action? Somebody recently told me that for them, they were told by their people in their village that in their family, they never get married. The elders in the clan, they told them that we don't marry, but we produce children and everyone has about 20 of them. And the greatest question was, are you married? Whoever told you to get married? At our house, we don't marry, we don't get married. But we produce a lot. That is not a, a cooked up story, a true story. Oh, Rosiru Gero Runauze, Nae Narulida, Eraruario. 
You know, a reproach will make you sleep with people when, you, you, when afterwards you even ask yourself, oh, why did I even do that? Some fornication is not because some people are weak. They have a stench on their lives that they have not dealt with. I told a story here in 12 hours of prayer. One of my great grandfathers was a preacher of the gospel. He went to visit one of his uh, converts. And he found that the man had married a second wife. So he asked this young girl, Who are you in this home? And the young girl looks down. <laughs> I am, the, I am the second wife. And the man asked her, why do you come into your friend's marriage to distort it? And the girl arrogantly responds to him, because I think you'll be the one to take me. And he responds back and tells her, me a leper of God. <laughs> a leper, sometimes they have lost some parts. Only one word. He kept quiet. And that girl was buried after one week. He, she was very alive. That is a reproach that causes you to get into the firing line of such things. You become a stench. For you, you're the one who is always at loggerheads with the bosses. You're the one leading the strike in the market to gain it, to gain it, to gain it. Reproach. The struggles are Some of the struggles are not godly, but they are, they are reproaches, and the one that is leading them has a reproach. Be careful whom you follow. Most especially if you have the spirit of God. Don't just follow. Even in politics. In fact, I don't know how many of you, before you vote, if you've inquired of God, who should I vote for? I bet you the majority of you never pray. You just say, you just wake up and ask what is cooking and what is going on and you just go and But you see, a reproach will make you keep a stench on yourself. People want to love you, but they cannot love you. There is something. Now we are going but you have those funny, funny behaviors you do, and you also know it. And you keep complaining. No, Me, I don't know. know why the pastors keep talking to so and so. Me, they don't talk to me. No, yeah, we again there is a oenzo kwesanga. What you was saying? Oh, we move on. Anya mpisa. Be careful. Go and search. There is one auntie for whom you don't know her character. But when God removes the reproach, he says that I will remove the northern army from you. He says that I will remove the northern army from you. Because the, the, that army comes with a stench into your life. But when God removes the reproach, he takes that northern army away from you. Praise the Lord. Verse 21, it says, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do 
great things. Do not be afraid, beasts of the field, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring, for the tree bears her fruit, the fig tree and the vineyard do yield their strength. Temutia mwe ensolozo munsiko kubanga amalundiro amalundiro agomudungu galoka kubanga omti gubala ebibala byagwo omutini nomzai nomzai tuni jireta amanyigajo When God is dealing with reproach in your life katonda waba akola obalwanyise chivume mbramu Favor returns oro Faithfulness returns. Fruitfulness returns. Because this verse tells you that what was once a wilderness where nothing grows, pastures begin to spring up. You become a blessing to others. When people don't expect you to even have a blessing on you, you bless them. And you, and you do it without effort. And it says that the trees bear their fruit. Do you know that you can invest a lot in something and it's not yielding? That is usually a sign of reproach. Because where God's blessing sits, the tree bears fruit and the fig tree and the vine, they come up with strength. Verse 23. It says, Be glad then, ye children of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rain faithfully, and he will cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain, in the first month. Ntikale musanyuke, mwe awana basayuni, eramu jaguze, mukama katonda wa mwe, kubanga abawa enkuba, e yatogo, mchigera chayo, echisana, era abatonye seza enkuba, o enkuba e yatogo, all that rain comes in one month. In other words, when God has blessed you and removed the reproach, you even get overwhelmed by the way blessing comes into your life. Let me tell you something, church. We are living in a period where if you're not careful, you can be confused by the words of God that are going out. I had this prophetic word where a very respected man of God said that the years between 2020 to 2027 are going to be years of drought. Economic drought. I can tell you, if you look at what's happening in the world today, it is economic drought. But then as I was thinking about this guy's word, when the seven thin cattle showed up in Egypt, when they came to Egypt, there was a place called Goshen. In the entire scripture, when Egypt was suffering, the children of Jacob and Israel were seated in Goshen. There was no record of suffering for them. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I do not want you to rationalize God's word. You can still be blessed in a season like this and you can Ochai, prosper in a season like this. 
God's word does not contradict itself. But sometimes God will give you one word so that you understand another word that is hidden in it. When a reproach is removed, you will sow in a place where everyone else is running and you will prosper. Isaac sowed in the same place that was in a bad state that everyone was running from and he prospered. Verse 24. The threshing floors shall be full of wheat and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts, I wish you had used KJV because there was something I'm looking for there. Do you have the King James Version? I know you're using NKJV. Because I want to show you something in English that the King James Version puts there. Thank you. He says, and I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer one, my great army which I sent among you. Every time you see a sentence beginning with and, it means you must consider what was before that. What happens before this end? There is people in a solemn assembly. There is people who the priests are praying over. Saying that Lord remove the reproach from them. And when the reproach goes away. The Bible says that then God restores to you the years that the locust has eaten. The cankerworm, the caterpillar, the palmerworm, my great army which I sent among you. God sometimes allows things that eat our prosperity because of reproach in our life. This is the only place in scripture and the only place in life where I hear God saying that he restores wasted time. Some of you feel that time has gone because of the way the reproach has operated in your life. Some of you feel like the losses have been too many because of the reproach and how it has operated in your life. Some of you feel like the insults on your life have been way overbearing. Because of the way the reproach has operated in your life. But the Bible says when the prayer of freedom comes over your life, God will accelerate you and you will catch up even with where people thought they had left you behind. You know, the reason why I only get a few amens in the house is there are only a few people who have understood that principle. Many times you cannot say amen to something you've not had a personal experience to. God is able to accelerate you. Otherwise, the Bible would not say that the children of the barren woman are more than the children of the married woman. You want to get that receive gospel. Mukama. Amina. 
There is a place you get to in God. And the Lord changes your history. And he begins doing things. That even those who went ahead of you. And overtake them and they ask themselves how you, how you got to that place. And that thing also exists in the Lord. But for that thing to happen, to you, this reproach must have been dealt with. Even if it is the Lord Himself who had instituted it. Because it is past, he shows that this army that was devouring this nation, it was brought by He Himself. But God. Can, is, the Bible says that when he brought the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. And then our mouth said, and the Lord has done great and mighty things for us. <laughs> let, me tell you, let me tell you something about scripture. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. It was not talking about the Logos. In the Logos there, in moments like this as I preach, there are words that keep jumping up. They jump up. And those that hear those words and grab them, the Bible says that they have heard and those words will become activated in them. So it is a dangerous thing for you to be seated in a place like this and I am declaring the oracles of God. And you walk away having grabbed nothing. Because the word of God that works is the one that you have grabbed. Let's move to the next verse. And it says and why and what has happened before here the place of waiting on God in fasting and prayer and what has happened before this God has removed the reproach what happens when the reproach goes you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied the church is full of complacent people. They are complacent. They go just like that because if they don't become complacent, they may rot. And they think our God is a God of small things, small, small. How, when shall we get to that stage when they say that that big store is for a born again person? I'm tired that every time you go to vote, there is no born again that you can vote for. I'm tired of that thing. This is the problem. There are reproaches among the children of God. They don't understand that when the reproach has gone away, you will eat in plenty and be satisfied. It is okay to be satisfied. It is okay for you to be in a happy marriage. By the way, if you brought a G class, G63, and you packed it there, and it is in your names, it is okay. <laughs> But it is okay. It is okay to build a golofa in Chiriagonja and you sleep in it when at night it is lit up like this. It is okay to build a That is called satisfaction. Hmm. 
Amen. Born against. It is okay. It is okay for you to have somewhere you go and pick your rent and they are just fighting to rent your That is called satisfaction. It is okay for you to wake up and say, by the way, over to Genzeko, Switzerland. It is okay. <laughs> And you wake up and get a ticket and go it to Switzerland okay just for to a wake holiday. up one day and there is a need no gamba. Over to Tunde, to Kola Kuchino. It is okay. Let's sell, let's sell our and work on it, is okay. on it is okay. 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 It's okay. When the Lord rolls away the reproach, I want to take away that mindset that these things are so far away from us, they are far-fetched. Every time the Lord tells us to fast and pray, when the priests pray for us, one of the things that the Lord wants to do is the reproach. Because when the reproach is dealt with, there comes satisfaction. Amen. You know what? You go and sound the drums sometimes. Where people in Karamoja, where people have been. Hungry. Don't expect someone to just stand up there and then spontaneously and begin dancing. Right now in this congregation. And that is the problem we have. I want, I want to challenge you so that you live here annoyed, but then you be challenged. And I'm tired of these stories that I began with one kilo of pork and now I have so many pork joints and the people who are saying such stories are the, the heathens, not the children of God. If it happens to the heathens, how much more shall it be unto the children of God? Church, why is your faith? It's possible to be born in a rich family and you die in utter poverty. Absolute poverty. I've ever seen it. One person I know very well. The, the parents left uh, buildings on Nkrumah Road and uh, rentals and even money on the account. The account. Before that person even made 40, they wanted even to sell the burial grounds of the parents. So don't ever stand and say he's speaking just because he's standing at a vantage point. No. Forget where you saw me, you don't know me at all. You don't know my story, my history. You don't know how many barrels are found. Because that's not why I'm here telling you what I'm telling you. Don't ever say it again that they were born in abundance. A person who does not want to be challenged, they will never develop and they will never change. Not me that much, even tomorrow I will keep on greeting you. But you see when the Lord has removed the reproach, the word plenty, satisfied are there. And, and the verse doesn't stop there. It says, and they will praise the name of the Lord your God
God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Nemutenderesa erinyarya mukama katonda wamwe eyabakola ebyechitalo nabantu bange tebali kwati wansonyi enaku zonna. The reason why some of you cannot even praise God. You have no plenty. You're not satisfied. You have really nothing to thank God for. But until you have dealt with reproaches, then your children will not prosper. Do you know that it goes even up to that level? I was on YouTube. And I saw a story. A boy of 35. Went and got married to um, a, a, a woman. 50 year old a woman, woman of 50 years. A, a man of 35. A celebrity. Married a 50 year old woman. Now again, an afum bidwa omcha omkazi wa miyaka tan. That woman Mkazoyu had discovered the secret. Yayazu de chama. You know why? Mayuach. The woman is born again. Mkazi mlokole. That guy is an artist in Kenya. Oyo oyo mfubuka mu uh muyimbi wa gospel. Kenya. Avantubaga mu mfubuka towasa mukazi mukuru tomu wasa. The people told this young man, please don't marry that old lady. And this gentleman was saying, I know what I'm doing. Leave me alone. They've been, they've been married, I think now they're going to four years. Now, how did this 50-year-old overtake the 25 Sire Queens? She had dealt with her reproaches. Such things exist. And when you go to his YouTube, he's always singing him songs. And for you, you're there, you despise yourself. Cerebu, a celebrity. He had a lot of money. Innocent he had some good muscles and six packs. American and height. But he went with a 50-year-old and said, I want that one. Now, this is what When God comes and takes away the reproach, you will eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. That lady that they married. She had, she already had a child who was above 20. She was wondering why When God comes in, it doesn't matter how many children you have. It is okay. To eat plenty and to be satisfied. Now some of you look at Pastor Solomon cruising his It is okay to drive an M class. But it's okay for him to cruise an GLS. It is okay. Even the GLS, the China when God rises up to work, he does not apologize for blessing us. He has no apology. No 
Nola ba Maduka. No look, kidira mochikubo. Look at the shops in Chikubo. Ne wano waguru mukawempe. Even here in Kawempe. Ne wano nye duka ericha sinzo kubeda prosperous. No mugula mochigambo eria murokole. Genda ewa murokole. And they look for the biggest shop and nobody can direct you to Amlokole's place. That's a reproach. Hmm? Said when you have a reproach, they ask, where is your God? Be so rich. That they will come and ask, but Mr. Bon again, how do you do these things? Before they come to you, ask how you do it. Or how you do your business. You haven't gotten there yet. You haven't gotten there yet. I'm waiting to see the day on the ballot paper when we have 60% born again. But you know why born again are not there? We haven't dealt with the reproach. Where are the born again schools? What's the SCE us, now they are coming up. Someone builds a wall in the road and we are quiet about it. That's a reproach. It's a reproach. Some, some, of you what we are doing. some of you don't understand that building we are dealing with. We are rolling away the reproach. Somebody told me, Pastor. The building is so fantastic. <laughs> and, he and he was just gymming. He was a, okay. I was like, it's just beginning. Eh? It's just a beginning. Because, because brethren, bino, bino, bino. these old places do not glorify God. Now it's okay for Cause, you. The has, the what are they using that money for? Hey, that is centers of fairs, oh. That's our money. They're just wasting it. Out. You are sure. As you are talking. Talking. And one of them is eating plenty. One of them is eating plenty and being satisfied. And that brings praise to the name of the Lord. If you have never been at a place where you are wondrously amazed, let me tell you what happened to me end of this week. We bought land somewhere and this person played around with us. We took them to court. They tried to corrupt the system. But end of last week, the judge passed a judgment. When I interpreted that judgment, my friend, that person is going to pay. Now you don't even understand the judgment it of the judge. Okay. If what I'm trying to show you is that when God rolls out the enter into a place of plenty, you are satisfied and the name of the Lord has to be praised and glorified. You only need one thing. Stay at that position where they roll away the reproach. 27. I want to wind up. And you shall know 
How do you know? You are that place where they roll away the reproach. When the reproach is rolled away, you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and no one else and my people shall never be ashamed. The first time. We went for the boxing contest. Just as Uganda looked like they but that, that is unknown. We got some people that went through to the final. And, and there are some more five that were invited on the national team. Now I'm I'm to you, that when the Lord rolls out the reproach, he goes even with the shame. It is not in order for the children of God to be ashamed. Verse 28. What does it say? And. Why and? After being in that place where reproach is rolled away. When the Lord rolls away reproach. It shall come to pass afterward. After what? When he has dealt with the reproach. When you have eaten plenty and you are satisfied. When he has given you oil and new wine and everything. And your floors are full of flour. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, even if I didn't read that whole verse, we all know that verse. But people have taken things upside down. They think that they have to first arrive here before the things I've talked about happen. They think that they first have to arrive here before they do the things that happened first. Let me speak this way. Revival. What is called a revival? By the time it is well manifested, after the Lord rolls away the river, that is how the scripture says. And if they say that a revival has come, it means that the Lord has rolled away the reproaches that have been taken away. We don't understand what they're talking about. When God pours out his spirit, and sons and daughters prophesy, old men dream dreams, and young men see visions, God carries out one operation before that. The church must be free of reproach. They must be in a place of plenty. Then revival becomes visible. It is not me. You have seen the flow of events. Let me tell you people. Let me repeat something I've said as I come to a closure. We need to understand that sometimes reproach brings a stink on our lives. And that stink is what people see. Reproach can cause you to commit adultery. Reproach can cause you to be a thief. Reproach can cause you to be a liar. Reproach can cause you to commit fornication. Reproach can cause you to be the most disliked person in the village. There is a place of deliverance in the place where the, the, the priests of God are. 
And let me tell you something. We do not tell God how to, he does his work. God has pre-appointed certain things to happen a certain way. When he appoints a priest over you, please understand there is a blessing of yours that sits upon that priest. That's why I pity people who despise the priests of the house. Some of you people have no fear at all to talk about the priests of the house. Some of you people we preach sermons here and you go and you, and, and you dissect them and you, you, you you basically show how wrong the sermons are. But God does not work the way you think he works. God has appointed the foolish things of this world to make the foolish wise and to make the wise foolish. In fact, the scripture says he chose the foolish things of this world to Confound the wise. So sometimes some people will lay hands on you and they will mutter a lousy prayer. And God will work. Do you know why? It is a prayer based in principle. Scripture says, honor your father and mother that you may live a long life. It does not say honor them when they are born again. Honor them when they like you. Honor them if they are behaving properly. It just says honor them. God chooses what he will choose. But what you need to understand as I close, when reproach has been rolled away, you don't even need to testify. We will testify for you. We will testify for you. When reproach is rolled away, even the one who does not fear God will say that that girl has a God. Because reproach has been rolled away. I want to pray. Let us stand up as we close. I want to invite the pastors up to the front because we're going to pray for people. Some of you may be feeling that you need prayer over reproaches that you feel and you know have been upon your life. If we prayed over you in the morning, please don't come. But if we didn't pray over you and you understand you need this prayer, please come to the front and we pray over you. Satisfaction comes out of the reproach being broken off of your life. If we prayed for you in the morning, please don't come back. Pastors, let us lay hands on these people as we pray for them. If you have come to be prayed for, put that reproach before God. You know your reproach. Just speak it before God. And say, God, I brought this reproach before you. Roll it away from me. Let the priests do their own work.
thank you, Lord. For your servants, men and women standing before you today. I need pastors to pray for you. Don't waste a lot of time. Don't waste a lot of time. Don't waste a lot of just lay hands on people and say a little prayer. Thank you, King of Kings. Join your hands together. You who have come up front to be prayed for, hold hands Let's together. Let's create a chain. Create a chain, a constant chain. Create a chain, a constant chain. Jegere. The pastor is passing through, you allow them to go through and then you Father, we approach your throne of grace this afternoon to obtain grace and mercy for help in our time of need. If you come in front, if you come in front, Hold the hand of your neighbor and create a chain. Create a chain. Lady at the end, I asked you to hold the hand of the person behind you. Let us seal the chain. Let us seal the chain. Seal the chain. Seal it. Seal it. Hold the hand of that person. We bless your name, King of Kings. Thank you, Lord, as we approach your throne of grace. We come to obtain grace and mercy for help in time of need. Lord, look at your people. They need healing. Let there be healing that flows among your people tonight. Roll away the reproach. Roll away the reproach. Things that have prevailed for hundreds of years. Generational reproaches. Generational reproaches. We have been before you many times like this. And people have left the way they came. But not tonight, Lord. Not tonight, Lord. Shift, 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 shift. Shift, shift, shift. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Put the reproach before you if you came. Call the reproach by name. Tell the Lord to roll the reproach away. If you decide to no refuse to speak about that reproach, I speak healing. Let there be 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 healing. In the name of Jesus. Restoration of honor. We break the defeat. We break the chains of the reproach that have been sitting on the lives of your men and your women. These ones are your heritage, my God. They carry your name upon you, upon them. In the name of Jesus, let there be deliverance. Let there be deliverance. For you say that in Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance. And your people shall possess their possessions. You came to pray. Mushalabaradebosakadabasanalamashorebaba. Father, in the name of Jesus, let each and every one receive liberty. Let each and every one of them attain independence tonight. 
I rebuke the chains of the evil one. Let those chains be broken. For we lay our hands on your people. Let the virtue of healing flow. Let the reproach be broken this day forward. In the name of Jesus. At your throne of grace, my God. You can be The Bible says to Zerubbabel, shout to the mountain, grace, grace. As you mention the name of your reproach, say the words grace upon it. Speak the words grace upon it. In the name of Jesus, we speak to these mountains. And we declare and decree grace, 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 Mara da basenda la masaka ya la ba, rese da bosa kaya la ba, rane mashere bosa ndela kaya ba, mala mashere bosa la ba, rane baso la bara kaya ba, male mashala ba ba. Receive victory in the name of Jesus. 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 Please and Allah basale bosha kandara baba bab. Male basara basha kandara baba. Namma sandara baba bab. Yahweh Elohim, let there be an exchange. Let there be an exchange of increase. Let there be an exchange of increase. Moshe kere basanda rababa. Bino biya to sabiro ruale ramo kama. Sibia kuogere rab. Na yebi rabi ke kongo buchuri si. Muri ni ya Yesu. Le basanda raba zile boka. Rane mashe kala baba. Le basanda re moshe kaya. Mare basanda raba se kaya. Mala masere boshe kala baba. La masanda raba boshe kala baba. In the name of Jesus, mark them Holy Ghost, mark them Holy Ghost, mark them Holy Ghost with your seal of ownership. In the name of Jesus, Rabo Sele Boshe Kalababa, Imo Sandere Boshe Le Barakadaba, Mala Masale Boshe Kaya, Libaradaba Sandere Kadabashe Kaya, Mare Kadabasa Kaya, in the name of Jesus, Libore Kadabashe Le Baranaba, Le Barabashi Kandarababa, Male Boreda Bashi Kandarababa. All those idols that have exalted themselves, we rot you out of these people's life. We command you to bow down. For at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Male bashere bosanda rababa, male basanda rakaya baba. Wase mu maso wano. Nakugambi ebera kebi gambo biyogera maso gaka tunda. Speak words before God. La boshe kanda rababa, shanda rakaba. Male barada basheke rababa, male basanda rababa. Ele tole kaya ndole produce taya. Shetele lele la la la. Bakwa sobu anguzi. Bakwa sobu anguzi. Give you victory. Molinyeri ayesu. 
of Jesus. I give you victory. Shut your in the name of Jesus. Shut your in the name of Jesus. May grace increase upon you. May grace increase upon you. May the grace of the Lord increase upon you until it floods grace, over. Grace, grace. In the name of Jesus. I speak transformation in the name of Jesus. By the blood of Jesus, I erase the reproaches. By the blood of Jesus, I erase the reproaches. By the blood of Jesus, I, of Jesus, I command an exchange in the name of Jesus. Where there has been defeat, I decree and declare victory. Where there has been defeat, I decree and declare victory in the name of Jesus. La parada basokaya kama sala borakada ba sanda la basokala baba let the crimson flood flow le kaboshenda la baba ba om sai gwa yesu om sai gwa yesu om sai gwa yesu go yerenge search of me mukama sasira bantu bo mukama sasira bantu bo yerenge search of me chino ruele nyari mukama Yiring is such Chusa 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 Ebi tabe bi echifu me bi karwe wo Oro musa yogwa yesu Ebi tabo ebi echifu me bi karwa wo Oro musa yogwa yesu De seka bara baba Lada bo seka da baba baba I expand the record of the reproach by the blood of Jesus De seka bo saya I overwrite it with grace in the name of Jesus, grace, grace, grace. Mosheda Bashokaya, Mosheda Bashokaya, Male Barakadaba, La Sakaba Sandela, Moshekara Basakaya, Yes, God, Sendara Basakaya, Marakadaba, Receive new strength. Receive new strength. Receive new victory. Restoration. Grace for prosperity. Come on, come on. For you that came to the front, say that I receive a new life. Begin to bring yourself into a new life. I receive a new life. Receive a new life. Receive a new life. Receive a new life. 
Behold, everything becomes new. Behold, everything becomes new. Behold, everything becomes new. Receive a new life. Receive a new life. Receive a new life. Receive a new life. Everything 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 becomes new. Receive a new life. 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 Grace for speed. Grace for speed. Everything becomes new. Everything becomes new. Everything becomes new. Receive. Everything. Receive. Everything. Everything. Receive. Everything. 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 Receive. Receive. Over the next couple of weeks, certain things are going to work away. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Find strength. Find strength in the grace of the Lord. Find strength at the throne of grace. Transformation. 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 The grace for restoration. Yeah! Yes, for restoration. Broken marriages are made whole. Broken marriages are made whole. I create order. 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 I restore 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 order. Yeah. Grace, grace, grace. In the name of Jesus. Lift those hands and give the Lord a clap offering.
things will not remain the same. Now listen, listen to me. You may not see it. But things have not remained the same. In fact, for some of you, even before you see it, people are going to come to you and they'll tell you, but there is something different about you. Then you will know that things did not remain the same. Praise the Lord. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Paul. Clap unto God. We are still continuing with praying and fasting. This, the past week we've been blessed. Our pastors have been coming in different ways, each one of them. But I, want, I want to assure you that there is there are men of God in this place whom God has anointed. You can read the same scripture every other day, but then someone comes and reads it differently and you, you receive a different message from it. That is how God has been blessing us. We thank the Lord. So this week, the beginning week, we prayer direction. We have gotten the prayer direction. We are going to roll away every reproach. Do not bother anybody seeking for a prayer point. We always gather here every day at five. Whatever you're looking at and you're not getting it well, it's a reproach. You've delayed to get married. You have food. The, the, the family is well, getting spoiled. You're getting sick. Business, you start up a business, well, but you not not up. Not up. You do not see anything that has come out of the money. That, God is taking away all that reproach. They have said that you always smell, you stink. I even Someone can be there and rejoice. But if you look at someone who is talking about poverty, there are some words I no longer use. Poverty is too much. Sunshine is too much, even in the pocket. Take your funny words away from us. That thinking is got getting away in Jesus' name. And the kind of you seeing people expect using what they have in the where they want if you see someone having four cars you leave them to enjoy I pray for you that God does that to you so that you will receive the answer as to why people ba, use ba what they have. Have. let me see people who are ready to enter into that grace may God give you that grace in Jesus name thank you Uncle Paul that grace in Jesus name thank you Uncle Paul we got tired of poverty in 1981 in 1981 
my, the mother of Pastor Tucker gave birth to him. But there was a lot of poverty. I cannot explain what she went through. But I grew up knowing poverty only. I want to celebrate my mother. That's um, his mother. <laughs> Oyo, yatunde mbuzi. She sold the goats. Natunda, natembe ya mata. She, she, she Natunda sold, kasori. She sold maize. Na mevu. With yellow bananas. Nga yagala njogere kuluzungu. Yeah, she, she wanted me to speak English. Katika luwale lunji miride wano kumanyike mkubire mungalo. So I'm standing here because of her. Let us clap for her. Thank you for coming today. Even tomorrow we want you here. Our pastor is not here today. Pastor but if we see mommy here, we do not ask a lot of questions. Celebrate, celebrate. Celebrate. And all the pastor team is present. How many of you are enjoying to be in this place? You're going to see unusual things happening. Praise the Lord. We want to congratulate all our children who sat there peacefully. There is Diane's daughter. There is Deborah. She got eight. She will come here she's the head teacher and she called me to go and pray for the children and I told them that I've never prayed for children first grade in the first grade from the village there First grade Kuminata and Masulita. First grades from Masulita, where the school is. But Mami Bagene Yungatuina Nakumanyanti, whatever Yakavayo. Mami started that church from there and you couldn't believe that. Kuminata Nunga, Gatazili Kokabu, Zakuminata. Fifteen first grades from there. Bakuabana. Bakuemba Kirizaban, Mutualabana Machalo. Take children to where the school is. Yeah. And hey. they are, oh, we will get time to test the Let us clap for all the candidates of P7 who sat there. PLE. We congratulate you. Our school from Yesopagala. A church which they started when they were from America. So the school is really doing well. We have even the secondary school. We go and register children. 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 Let us clap for God. The last Sunday of the month, we always put on these t-shirts. Kagate tuloza nti ulokuwa tulimu abiri mu 2023 nti ukuzimba kwa koma mu 2022. So if you think that we already built our church in 2022. Ila muamiru talu ya saza magezi. Simanyi waze na t-shirt ya fuku. Whoever is putting on these t-shirts, please clap for us. Even if it's not putting on these t-shirts, please clap for us. Even if it's not putting on these t-shirts, please clap for us. 
I was going to give to, to give us a, a fine beginning. <inaudible> so this month. Don't dare to put on any other thing on the last Sunday of the month. Because the Lord is saying to you, we are still building and every other money we, we, we used to buy the t-shirts are for the building. The replosh was rolled away from the replosh was rolled away from the when you look from afar, you see a very beautiful building around. When this one is done, we are going to build the cathedral. If you're a visitor, may you please put up your hand. If it is your first time hey, to come to the place, <laughs> Yimira <laughs> She is no longer Taka. She knows every detail about her so church. She is going to speak to you after that service. She is going to speak to you after that service. You can get seated. How many of you want to give their lives? Whatever has been taught here today, I received by God. God. If you are going to give your life to Christ, these things are done for those ones who are born again. How many of you want to get born again? Get up on your feet. So, we are having fellowship tomorrow. At the center. Those who are able to go to the town, you can go. Ladies, we have a meeting for only five minutes. So after we are sitting where Mrs. Kenya is. Amen. Amen. Lift up your hands and I, I declare a blessing in Jesus' name. Every reproach which was bringing speaking, that Kulemerewa, <laughs> A simu ye chigende re wa. Muri nyali amukama fe yesu. Nangiro mukisoko tali kubiri. I declare blessing without sorrow. Toluaza. You will not have. Toluala. You will not fall. Toja kufa. You will not die. Ati toja kufisa. Katonda tereze kuboliyo. May God make a way. Teri accident yonna. No accident. Katonda take away all ubi wona. Take away evil far from you. And may the blessing I pray for you. It will bring profit. All the customers who come to the church. I pray for those who are in government. I pray for those who are in the church. I pray for you. And a blessing who sit in your homes. And I pray for this blessing also. May God bring school. Oh, Sasule Kuruna Kuru Soka. Obey the zero balance in Mulinia Yes. Every number of your quit of your squish some come off. I pray all in Jesus' name. Wabewa Gamati Amina. Let someone say Amen. It's such a come of his crystal. And may the grace. O Quagala Quacatonda. 
Okoseki moko mumtu kuvu, vena vena, na boluga na bonna, amene mchita guao, amen. Okusi ba kuchage na mas. We are still fasting. Tumale na kuzamwe zinga kumi na manana kumi kumi na mwenda. We are ending on nineteenth. Tujia kuvira one. We will be here. Ena kuzamwe zinga kumi na mwenda. On nineteenth. Mukama ba wamuksa. May God bless you. Abachia la temogenda. Ladies, the meeting. Mami, baaga la pala vira one one one. Yeah.